Good evening, members, and welcome to the second webinar of Boreal CP Study Circle. Today, we will be having the important aspect of new guidelines for MSME. Before we start the web, uh, VCM, let us raise for our institute motto along with the code of ethics. Good evening, Anand. Good evening, Abhay. Good evening. Good evening. Vijay, waiting room is The code of ethics is going on, sir. Achha. So we have to be silent? Yes. Welcome back, members. Today on this topic, we have an eminent speaker, Anand Ji, the moderator, Kinjal, and the panelist, Abhay Mehta. Not taking much of your time, I will request our past convener, Ashish Jakelia, to briefly introduce the three. Over to Ashish. Thanks, Vijay. Yeah. Thank you, Vijay, for giving me this pleasant task of introducing speaker and the panelist of today's uh, first, I would like to introduce an, uh, speaker Anand Bhatia ji. Uh, CA Anand is a, a chartered accountant also as well as the company secretary 
he has also done law and he is a post graduate in uh, has completed post graduate in securities law and from government law college and has completed disa from icai he is a partner with the transactions and consulting practice verticals of batia and associate llp and previous experience of having worked with world leading accounting and consulting firms he is engaged in mergers and acquisitions and has advised for more than 200 mergers and acquisitions transactions over the past 15 years he is advising private equity fund venture capital funds families offices in formation fund documentation etc and also ipos qips and right issues open offers he is involved in various corporate consulting also valuation and group restructuring he is a member of promu uh, of the valuation standard board for drafting valuation standards to be made applicable to the ministry of corporate affairs he is also a key author to financial instruments and as uh, he is a managing committee member of bombay chartered accountant society and also of chamber of tax consultant he is a member of a real estate committee of indian merchant chambers for 1920 and he has sp spoken various at various seminars at icai and icsi he also represent as a independent director on board and audit committee of listed companies with this brief introduction i welcome ca anand ji now i would like uh, to introduce our panelist uh, ca abhay mehta abhay bhai uh, our core core team member abhay bhai i know uh, most of us everybody of us knows uh, abhay bhai is since uh, start of our study circle with us he is uh, in the practice since 26 years he is a partner of uh, mehta choksi and sa llp he is specialized in corporate law accounting standard internal statutory audit internal audit ifc implementation in as and uh, various other things uh, due diligence and analysis of company financials he is a honorary uh, treasurer of bombay chartered accountant society for the year 1920 and joint secretary for 1718 and 1819 he was special invited to the accounting standard board of icai he was a member of financial reporting review group constituted by frrb of icai is a resource compiler of mandatory accounting standards extract from published accounts a bca publication co published with cch a uh, walter business one of the author is also one of the author of bca publication faqs on accounting standard and faqs on standard on auditing he had been a convener of accounting and auditing committee of bombay chartered accountant society and has delivered various lectures at our study circle also at icai level also and wirc ctc on topics of company law accounting and auditing i welcome abhay bhai welcome sir now i would like to introduce uh, our moderator ca kinjal sa for the today's webinar kinjal sa is also our core team member he is practicing ca with two decades of experience in financial and capital market and specialized in securities law it security audit and forensic audit he has authored handbook on pmla of uh, for chambers of tax consultant and technical guide on internal audit of stock brokers for icai he is past uh, convener of bca bcsc and managing committee of bca welcome kinjal bhai uh, over to you vijay introducing all the three panelists uh, also we would like to uh, give our speaker a cabf con uh, the speaker contribution to cabf of 501 rupees to the institute uh, sir now you can start your session thank you thank you very much uh, vijay ji thank you very much uh, yashesh ji sharad bhai pratik uh, and all the organizing team at uh, the borivari central cp study circle it's a pleasure to again come at uh, borivari central cp study circle this time on a different topic uh, abhay bhai kinjal bhai you know uh, we work 
uh, a lot close on many different forums and happy to share the screen with them and not the dias in this case uh, so clearly you know friends as uh, uh, the topic of the webinar refers as new guidelines on uh, msme i may just want to add here that uh, these so called msme guidelines or the msme act has been there in place since last 14 years so maybe the word or the appropriate word will be renewed guidelines or renewed focus on msmes that uh, we are seeing now uh, on account of uh, you know the corona pandemic that we are all grappling with this was also perhaps the first uh, introduction where in a session uh, in this times where we didn't hear the word corona or covid 19 because uh, generally that's the topic that uh, the introduction always covers but friends clearly covid 19 or uh, corona pandemic is uh, affecting all of us history will maybe remember this time as uh, the most challenging in our gender generation and maybe we will uh, know the period as pre corona and post corona as well in terms of the impact that uh, this pandemic has on our lives and on our livelihoods in this context friends one of the vulnerable sections from a livelihood perspective is uh, msmes and which is where there is this renewed focus to ensure that uh, the msmes are able to sail through this pandemic with the least amount of uh, difficulty so uh, the way that we have uh, structured this uh, presentation today is uh, that uh, uh we will for the first 45 minutes to 1 hour uh, you know cover the broad guidelines around msmes what are the various benefits available to msmes how do you register for your ca firm or for your clients under msme and with that what are the obligations that come as a registered msme we will also talk about the atmanirbhar bharat scheme which has laid down a lot of emphasis on msmes after that uh, so called one hour session we will have a panel discussion where kinjal will moderate and have some relevant questions surrounding this topic uh, in the interim if any one of you all has any questions during this presentation feel free to write it in the q and a box or in the chat box and kinjal will take it up in the panel that we have after this session so friends let's take a context of what msmes are and how big this universe is as per a 2016 survey there are about 6.3 crore msmes in india uh, and as we know a business can be divided into manufacturing services and trading and it's almost a equal split of about let's say 2 crore 10 lakhs in manufacturing an equal number of msmes engaged in services and a equal number engaged in trading so this is a very very large number perhaps uh, you know the highest in the world in terms of so many businesses in one country uh, to give a context or to set a context we have about 10 lakh companies which are registered with the registrar of companies or roc now those 10 lakh companies is also the highest number of companies which are registered under a single act anywhere in the world and in context of the 10 lakh companies and the noise that they make we have about 630 lakh msmes that are operating in india across these three sectors and from 2016 till 2020 this would only have increased in terms of their size these msmes generate about 12 crore jobs so if you see on an average one msme is having about two jobs and again these jobs are equally split between manufacturing services and trading one of the very important features to my mind why there is this renewed focus on msme at the government level at the policy level is this particular job focus that is bringing lot of attention to msmes friends as a country india has limited capital resources for a economy to grow for a businesses to grow there are three broad requirements 
either it is capital or it is technology or technical skill sets or it is your labor force now india unfortunately is a capital starved country given the per capita gdp that we have on the technology side we are catching up though some of the far east companies japan etc may be much more in terms of technology but the strength that india has is in our demography is in our labor force and if you are able to deploy that resource that we have in abundance i think that is where our competitive edge lies in terms of using our available demographic population to generate what is helpful for the economy so given that plus the pandemic that has given rise to a lot of migration and things will change going forward clearly to avoid any social unrest jobs are the single most focus currently in the policy think tank and if we have let's say for example as a country we have 1000 crore rupees of capital which we have to deploy and we have a choice where to deploy this 1000 crores if i deploy that 1000 crores in one large steel plant maybe that steel plant can generate 1000 jobs in that 1000 crore investment and effectively giving me 1 crore kind of a one job that is created because of that plant but research and study says that if this 1000 crore of capital is given to 10 small small support industries ancillary units processing units you will be able to generate at least 500 jobs per 100 crore investment so effectively you are saying 1 is to 5 can be the ratio if you give 100 crore to each smaller unit and this ratio can really extrapolate if you give 1 1 crore to 1000 msmes or smaller businesses because a 1 crore for a small business can also generate maybe 10 jobs and effectively we are looking at a significant job creation if you break up the available capital into smaller components and we would have seen the atmanirbhar bharat package giving loans to msmes in smaller smaller buckets again with the intention that it can create jobs and if these 6.3 msmes can even create one more job we are looking to add 7 crore jobs in the overall ecosystem which is a huge number these msmes of india friends contribute 30 percent of india's gdp which is a large number 30 percent is maybe more than some of the total gdps of certain countries and they contribute almost 50 percent of total exports from india so a lot of exports that are happening right now happen through msmes in the handloom spices services sector completely is accounting for almost 50 percent of the total exports from this 6.3 crore msmes about 1.38 crore msmes have registered themselves under this act which is the micro small and medium enterprises development act it's a 2006 act that was brought in so that there can be a formal registration for msmes and about 1.3 crore as of uh, april 2020 have been registered now friends over the last one year there has been a significant increase in terms of the number of msmes that have got registered thanks to the various different initiatives and incentives that the government is bringing in and this will only continue going forward and we'll see some of the benefits in the subsequent slides in terms of the geographical split uttar pradesh and west bengal have the highest number of msmes tamil nadu being the third and maharashtra being the fourth now this is as far as the registered msmes go so in this 1.38 crore the highest composition is from uttar pradesh and bengal perhaps the feature coming out over here is that more politically active states more politically connective states have more registered msmes so maharashtra has highest number of msmes the registration percentage is significantly low when it comes to maharashtra so all of these makes msmes the backbone of the indian economy not even from an employment but from an export but from the families that it supports and this corona impact on msmes when we talk about survival of the fittest the msmes might not be the most fittest and might fall under the vulnerable group so this cocktail of our dependency plus the corona impact is bringing the renewed focus on msmes question comes is that why does india have such large number of msmes we are talking about six and a half crore businesses 
as MSMEs. And there are five broad features that come to my mind on why India has such large number of MSMEs. The first clearly is entrepreneurship. Now, you know, most of us as chartered accountants uh, are also in practice and maybe in a way entrepreneurship. But as per a 2019 study, India ranks second in the world in terms of number of entrepreneurs that we have in terms of per capita population. And this entrepreneurship drive, we would have seen the Gujarati community, the Jain community, Mawadi community, Maheshwari community. We are so ingrained into entrepreneurship that it comes naturally to us. When I was thinking of doing maybe chartered accountancy, one of the factors was that I can go for a job as well. And if at all I want to do entrepreneurship, I can set up my practice as well. So it is somewhere ingrained and wired into us much more differently than maybe in some of the other countries. And which is where you see many small businesses starting up by entrepreneurs. Second is the age of population. Now friends, typically a business mirrors the age of the founder. Businesses grow with the founder. When the founder is 40, 50 years old, businesses will mature. And most of the businesses die with the founder. It's only few businesses who can actually survive to a second generation or to a third generation. And India's average age, friends, is 29 years. So effectively, if our large force of our workforce is young, the businesses also effectively mirror that age pattern. And hence, they are smaller in size and MSMEs as they are called. The third is Indian economy at a very high level has only opened up recently. It has only been, let's say, 30 years in 1991 that private businesses were actually encouraged to come into the main fold. Before that, there was license, raj, consents, permissions to be taken. So it's been only recent that there has been opening up in terms of uh, the, the Indian economy. Now, one may think that 30 years is a large enough period for businesses to grow, for businesses to evolve. But friends, we are talking about a country and 30 years in the lifetime of a country is not too large a period. You would be surprised to know that in Japan, there are companies today which are registered in 600 AD. So effectively, they are 1400 years old today. I was working on a transaction where a French company was acquiring an Indian company. That French company was 350 years old. We would have all been knowing that Saint Gobain. Now, the 350-year-old company is competing with Indian companies over here. There's a different size that time gives. And Indian companies, in that context, 30 years is fairly small. The fourth is, never has been there an ecosystem for MSMEs to grow. This act itself came in 2006. And in fact, a large part of amendments only came in 2014. So it's largely been only five years that we have had this MSME ecosystem. And this ecosystem also has a lot of scope for improvement. And last but not the least is limited access to capital. Now, capital is the single biggest constraint in India. And hence, MSMEs, who are kind of the last in the pyramid, are always dried for capital. You see people nowadays getting checks in billions and millions in larger companies. But smaller companies typically have to stress themselves for capital. And hence, their growth is stunted. So these and by, five. And by, uh, sorry to interpret you, uh, interrupt you. Your voice is not uh, coming clearly. There are certain background noises also there. So can you adjust your mic? Just give me one minute. Is it now better? Yeah. Okay. okay. I've removed my microphone and we'll take it uh, on the screen itself. DJ, fees ka announcement? We'll do in the end of the seminar. Yeah, continue, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, I think... Now let's look at how does law define MSME. And this is the MSME Act, uh, which has certain criteria. 
Now the MSME DA Act says and divides these companies into micro, small, and medium enterprises. Until recently, before the Atma Nirbhar Bharat package came in, the in blur what I've written over here were the limits. And now under the Atma Nirbhar Bharat package, the limits have been increased and you can see the higher limits as well. So effectively, the classification is into micro, small and medium. And within them, earlier there was a classification which was different between manufacturing and services. But now there is just one threshold which is applicable for both manufacturing and services. The question comes here is that whether trading entities are allowed to become registered under this MSME Act? The answer is no. While under that 6.3 crore number, even trading entities would have been considered. But when you are looking at registering yourself under the MSME DA Act, trading entities are not allowed. It is only applicable to manufacturing and to services. Now you need to fall within a threshold which is linked to investment and your annual turnover. The investment limits are different for a micro, small and a medium. For example, a micro is an investment in plant and machinery in the case of manufacturing and investment in equipment in the case of services. That needs to be less than 1 crore and your turnover should also be less than 5 crores. It's an and. So if both those conditions of investment being less than 1 crore and turnover being less than 5 crore are fulfilled, then you can register yourself under the micro category. Or else, if you cross that threshold, there is the small category and then there is the medium category. What I have crossed marked in the medium category is that after the Atmanirbhar Bharat announcement, they increased the limit for the medium category and the investment and the turnover limit has been increased to 50 crores and 250 crores. Now friends, generally it is advisable that you fall under the threshold which is the lowest from a benefits perspective. Like most of the benefits would be available to micro and some of the benefits are not available to small and quite a few benefits are not available to medium. So typically when registering, you know, companies look at it registering in the smallest bucket just to make sure that they get most of the benefits. About 88% of today's registered MSMEs are under the micro category. Something similar to what we have in our CA profession as well, where a large part is sole proprietorships or maybe two partnerships. And even over here, about 88% are into micro. Question comes is that how do I calculate this investment uh, threshold? If I have purchased some plant and machinery in 2005, and then I purchase some plant and machinery in 2015, how do I add it? Do I take the gross block or do I take the net block, which is after depreciation? Now the guidance is that you have to always take the gross block, which is the invoice. Your purchase value is what you have to consider for calculating your investment that you have done in plant and machinery. If you have done in two tranches, you add the gross block of both of them and then you see whether the sum is something that falls within this threshold or not. Even if you have purchased second-hand equipment, you have to consider the value as if it was a new investment, what would have been the value and then calculate the limits. The requirement for turnover is annual turnover and it's a net turnover and not the gross turnover with GST. So if you are fitting within this, then you can register yourself for a micro, small or a medium, depending on the threshold that you fit in. Talking about plant and machinery, the investment in plant and machinery, especially for the manufacturing sector, the RBI notification in 2016 says that certain type of plant and machinery need to be removed when you are calculating the limits. So if you have paid something for installation of plant and machinery, or there are some research and development equipment or pollution control equipment. Similarly, if you have paid fees for technical know-how, if you have some storage tanks, and this notification is available online. But if you are falling in that particular boundary line, 
make sure that you remove all of these investments from your limit and then you fall maybe in a set that is slightly lower from the benefits perspective. How does one register the company assuming that now you are qualifying for the investment as well as the turnover threshold? How do you register yourself from for that MSME? Now, like for individuals, we have Aadhaar. For businesses, the coined word is Udyog Aadhaar. In 2015, in one of the monkey bath that our PM Modi does on a monthly basis, the thought was uh, envisaged that can we have a simple one page registration for MSME businesses? They don't have to go to any professional. They don't have to give any supporting document. They do it completely online. And that talk and that vision ultimately translated into Udyog Aadhaar sometime in 2015-16. So there is this udyogadhar.gov.in. It's a portal that the Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises have set up. And on that portal, businesses and companies can log in and uh, you can register yourself in a very, very, very simple process. To my mind, there is no requirement of any consultant or professional for registering a business as a MSME. Because if you can do, let's say, WhatsApp on your smartphone, you can easily go ahead and register for yourself as MSME. It's linked to your Aadhaar card. You get an OTP on your mobile number. You have to self-declare your assets. You self-declare your investment. You self-declare your turnover. And there is no certification required from any third party. And once you do that, within two days, you get an email that your Udyog Aadhaar number is this. You don't have to attach any supporting documents. There is no fee for registering or getting the Udyog Aadhaar, nor there are any physical submission required. So one of a kind registration, which is sort of self-processing or de facto, where you get this uh, number. Uh, this has also created challenges because a lot of entities which are trading entities have invariably got into this domain and registered themselves. And now there is a process of weeding out them that is ongoing. But yes, the facility is very simple. And within two days, without any verification, this number is available. Uh, there are also some other portals which are set up by a few private agencies which charge money for registering this. For example, there is udyogadhar.co.in. It's a paid by one private sector. But if you are going on the government website, there is no charge and you can do it for yourself or you can do it for your clients as well. There are some businesses which are not eligible for MSME registration. Now, MSME registration is linked to the NIC code. Most of us would be familiar with the NIC code that is available to every manufacturing activity or every service activity. If you are falling within this nine NIC codes, then you cannot register yourself as a MSME. And which is where wholesale trading, retail trading is coming. And then you have some of these agro-based industries, including NIC code one, which is agriculture predominantly. And if you're falling within this, you can't register for yourself as a MSME. The point number 99 NIC is important, which says activities of extraterritorial organization or bodies. Now, question typically comes is that if I am a subsidiary of a foreign company or if I have some foreign investors who have invested in me, can I register myself as a MSME? Now, this is one NIC code that uh, you know may, may, may affect. But as far as the company is concerned, the company would be engaged, let's say, into services or into manufacturing. So today, there are quite a few foreign subsidiaries also which have got registered under MSME. But we need to be careful about NIC number 99, which makes you ineligible from, uh, from a foreign subsidiary getting registered as a MSME. Other than that, it's actually open for everyone, including hospitals, including real estate players, including real estate agents, including chartered accountants, CA firms. All of us can register for MSME if we see benefit in that. In fact, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, the Ethical Standard Board, has allowed CA firms to get registered under MSME. And you know, a lot of firms have considered registering themselves as well. And uh, you may also evaluate depending on your features and factors. 
So what benefits are typically available to MSMEs? Now this ecosystem of MSMEs is supported by various different stakeholders and various different regulators. You have the MSME ministry, which is the key participant in coming out with benefits. The MSME ministry is coincidentally headed by the strong minister from uh, Maharashtra, Mr. Nitin Gadkari. And in most of the schemes that you will see of this ministry, you'll be able to see his blessings and stamp in terms of uh, the schemes that have come out by the MSME ministry. Similarly, you have the Reserve Bank of India. Like we saw, capital is the key constraint in growth of MSMEs and RBI being the regulator in terms of financing and banks also plays a key role in terms of facilitating the MSME ecosystem. We have the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Most of us as chartered accountants would know that in the annual report or in the balance sheet of a particular company, there is a separate split in terms of creditor schedule that payment to MSME and payment to others. That's a dictate by MCA because needs to come out in open that how much is outstanding to MSMEs. Ministry of Finance or MOF, the Atma Nirbhar Bharat package, the DIP, all the other arms of Ministry of Finance also cater to the MSME segment. And last but not the least is the state governments. Now, MSME is a concurrent subject as per our constitution. Not only the central government, but also the state government has powers to pass legislation. And we have seen a lot of state governments come out with peculiar schemes for MSMEs as far as their states are concerned. So let's talk about the MSME ministry first. Now, MSME ministry has a lot of schemes that they have set up. There are more than 30 schemes which are supporting various MSME categories, right from uh, you know, agro-based industries to if a MSME wants to go and file a patent, there is a, there's a reimbursement available, or if a MSME wants to attend a trade fair in a foreign location, the, the travel cost is reimbursed by one of these schemes. So there are various schemes which are available by the MSME ministry. In a subsequent slide, there is a list of those schemes and I'll also go through how does one access some of those schemes in this subsequent slide. The MSME ministry has a very interesting uh, you know, concept of Samadhan, Samband and Sampark. And these three words are very commonly used in the MSME framework. Samadhan, Samband and Sampark. And we'll go through each of these three in the next slide uh, because it's slightly detailed and it's an important benefit for all of us to be aware about. The RBI, on the other hand, has priority sector lending for MSMEs. So priority sector is where banks have to mandatory lend a percentage of their loan book to that particular category. So 20% of scheduled banks, public sector banks need to make this lending to priority sector and MSMEs fall within that. So if you are a registered MSME, if you have Udyog Aadhaar, then that much more easier for your bank to give loan to you because the bank will qualify for priority sector lending obligation that it has to RBI. Similarly, the RBI has also a separate interest subvention scheme under which on a particular loan, there can be a 2% interest subvention that can be given to an MSME. And we have, you know, personally in one of the clients vouched for this interest subvention scheme and it's a very simple process which goes through your own PSU bank, but you need to have MSME registration to avail benefit of this interest subvention scheme. Uh, a very important concept and one of my favorite uh, you know, uh, concepts in this MSME space is this TREDS. Now, this is a nothing but a trade receivable discounting stock exchange. Uh, and, and a very important and interesting concept, a separate slide I have made for this, We'll talk about it, but basically it's a stock exchange where you can discount your invoice as a MSME and we'll talk about that. Similarly, from an RBI perspective, there are liberalized provisioning norms for banks if a loan has been given to an MSME. And similarly, there is now a debt restructuring scheme that is going on for MSMEs as we speak, applicable till December 2021, under which there is a one-time settlement functionality that is available to uh, you know, banks when they have given loan to MSMEs. So RBI is doing quite a bit of providing liquidity to MSMEs. 
Uh, one survey RBI did about two years before to find out what is the average working capital cycle for an MSME. And to an astonishment factor, the working capital number of days on an average for an MSME came up to as high as 180 days. So on an average, you are looking at a six month credit cycle for an MSME to receive uh, money for its billed invoice. And that was identified as one area that needs to be focused upon. We as chartered accountants can also figure out how much of working capital gets blocked and what is the average time frame that we get fees from our client. Uh, you know, by one school of thought, our audit starts, let's say, from April of a particular year, but our billing only happens in the September of the next year. And only after you bill is there a receipt that happens subsequently. So it's a fairly long period in that sense as well. But MSME's peculiar challenge is high working capital, basically funding the larger businesses with the working capital of smaller businesses. With that problem in mind, MSME and uh, you know the MCA has brought out mandatory reporting of outstanding MSME dues. Last year, under Form 1, most of the larger companies and even quite a few smaller companies are required to file that form with the ROC twice a year, under which they have to mandatory disclose what is the outstanding to a particular MSME, including interest outstanding because the Act prescribes for certain interest. There's a fast track exit scheme for smaller companies that is available under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Again, they've added a provision where closure of these companies, which are MSMEs, can be much faster rather than the painful process of liquidation that one has in India. The disclosure in accounts, all of us as chartered accountants here in this forum are of course aware there's a separate disclosure of outstanding dues to MSMEs that comes in and that's also an MCA initiative. The Ministry of Finance, the, the IBBI or the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India uh, is kind of fitting under the Ministry of Finance, though it is an independent regulator. And IBBI has special provisions for MSMEs. For example, if you are an MSME company and you become insolvent under IBC, the promoters can again bid for that company because you the company is an MSME company. There is a section 240A under IBC, which allows promoters to bid back for their company if it is an MSME. Under the Atmanirbhar Bharat package, the minister has also announced that a separate code will come in, which will govern MSME insolvency, unlike the one size fits all code that is currently there under insolvency and bankruptcy code. There are tax related benefits as well in terms of GST and the income tax that are available, not to MSMEs, but to smaller companies and to startups particularly that are available. Atmanirbhar Bharat, which is a joint initiative of various ministries, and there's a separate slide on that in terms of the new benefits that are given to MSMEs under the Ministry of Finance banner. The state government, Maharashtra particularly, has the package scheme of in, uh, investing, which is predominantly applicable to manufacturing companies, but that gives a separate eligibility for MSMEs. There is a concession in stamp duty, there's concession in electricity bills as well. All the schemes of Maharashtra government are available on this website maitri.mahaonline.gov.in. Most of these are related to manufacturing as far as Maharashtra is concerned, but central schemes are what we'll focus more in the subsequent slides. So talking about what are the benefits under this uh, MSME ministry, a large long laundry list of 32 schemes which are available and, and it is also based on the industry that your client would be particularly working in and all the schemes are available on msme.gov.in. Now friends, you'll observe that there are these five, six different bodies which are working and attending to the needs of MSMEs. There is generally a problem that how do I know which scheme is meant for me? How do I know whether I comply for that particular scheme or not? And about three weeks before, under again this Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative, a new website has been launched called champions.gov.in. Now the idea and the objective of champions.gov.in is to make sure that there is a single window available under which all the schemes of different different ministries and different different bodies 
is consolidated so that if you are an MSME or if your client is an MSME, you can go on that website and all the schemes, new, current, recent, benefits, eligibility is available at one place. I would suggest that you know you can go on that website of champions.gov.in and further browse the various schemes that are available. There are some very interesting schemes of ISO 9001, ISO 14001. So if your client or even a CA firm is wanting to get into ISO certification, the cost of that will be subsidized under this ISO 9001 certification reimbursement program. Want to go for trade fair overseas or want to have a trade show in India? There are schemes available for that. 50% subsidy for patent registration, lesser fees up for trademark registration and various different schemes are available, which one can go and see uh, basically on champions.gov.in. On champions, there is also an industry-wise uh, uh, column available where you feed an industry and you'll come to know which are the different schemes that are available for that particular industry. So other initiatives which are today available and not as a part of Atmanirbhar Bharat package, I have tried to list them, the initiatives which are already available today. And one of the very important initiatives is Samadhan. Now, friends, the MSMEDA Act says that the any invoice that is outstanding from a MSME needs to be paid mandatorily within a period of 45 days. If that invoice is not paid, there is interest that is chargeable, which is three times the bank rate on a monthly compounding basis. So it's a significant penalty on delayed payment for MSMEs that would be done by larger companies or by other clients and customers. Now the problem is, yes, you are capturing data, who is paying, who is not paying, you are disclosing in the annual report, but the Indian legal system sometimes doesn't support me to go and file a, a, file a case and then recover my money after a 10 year battle. So this Samadhan portal, is an online portal that has been set up by the ministry. And you as an MSME can go online and upload your invoice or upload your work order. And if it is outstanding, they promise that within 90 days, they will bring that recovery back. This Samadhan initiative will first try to act as a mediator or as a facilitator. And if not, it will become an arbitrator. So you don't have to go and appoint a new arbitrator. It is as good as arbitration if there is a verdict from the Samadhan portal that you get. One more important disincentive for someone not to pay an MSME is that once the Samadhan initiative says that money is payable, if the client wants to go and appeal against that order, the client will first have to deposit 75% of its dues with the Samadhan Facilitation Center and only then it can go and appeal against order of that Samadhan initiative. So the Samadhan initiative is used pretty frequently nowadays and it's also very streamlined in that sense. And with virtual now, in fact, even if you don't have an invoice, even if you don't have a work order, you can file an affidavit and say that this is outstanding and your complaint will be registered against that company under the Samadhan portal. Second portal is the Samband, again, an online initiative. French 20% of all central public sector undertaking purchases have to happen through MSMEs. And how do you connect? So there's a portal, online portal, which also has a data bank. So you as an MSME can register yourself under that data bank and also access the various different tenders and open positions that are available currently with the public sector undertakings. And based on that, uh, you know, there is a logical reach that the public sector gets to fulfill the 20% criteria. And the MSMEs also have all the tenders available at one location. This data bank is a very important feature. And while there is no mandatory requirement for you to upload details in the Udyog Aadhaar, it is suggested that in the data bank, you keep uploading your information. If you have any more credentials or if your size increases, it only helps in terms of bringing renewed focus to your credentials in the database. Sampark. Sampark is a MSME job portal. Now, typically using some of these private job portals may entail a cost. And this is a Sampark, which is a free of cost job portal available to MSMEs. And a lot of resumes keep floating around, which are captured by this MSME job portal. 
the msme ministry also has centers where they give training to various youth across india and it's also initiative to connect them from a social cause with the msmes and your registration by default allows you to access samadhan to access sambandh and to access sampark as well as a part of your msme registration sidbi which is the small industries development bank of india has special loan and equity investment schemes for msmes and sidbi.in is the website there are also online applications that they attract nowadays recently there was a initiative of the government of india where they were giving loans to companies which are making gloves mask and personal protective equipment given the corona pandemic now this complete loan disbursal happened through the online platform of sidbi and within 48 hours funds were transferred to this particular companies who are engaged in manufacturing this pp equipments so this is one again initiative where sidbi is for small businesses and that is also available for msmes the rbi has a credit link capital subsidy scheme under which if at all you are taking loan for improving the technology or your manufacturing know how then you will get a subsidy and there is a cap and there is a percentage of subsidy which depends on industry and depends on how much credit you are taking but this is one scheme again details are available we don't want to get into the details of this scheme but these are some of the very important benefits that are currently available and one can use there is a collateral free loan that is available up to 1 crore under the stand up uh, india initiative and there is also 1% benefit on overdraft that is available to msmes now friends this is different from the recent atmanirbhar bharat 3 lakh crore initiative that the government announced this credit guarantee trust fund scheme has always been there and even today msmes registered have taken advantage where you don't have to give any collateral any personal guarantees and you get loan up to 1 crore along with interest subvention if it is overdraft there are schemes available for international for intellectual property and international marketing predominantly being 50% subsidy of patent registration and reimbursement of your participation cost in international trade fairs so some of these initiatives something that uh, we need to keep in mind and in testing times that most of the msmes are going through today if some of these you know measures are effectively adopted i think it can be a differentiator for msmes in terms of survival i spoke about treds now what is treds treds is nothing but a stock exchange which has been set up by rbi uh, i have named three stock exchange here m1 rxil and invoice smart now on this treds platform of rbi these three stock exchanges are currently functioning let's take an example if i am a small supplier a msme supplier uh, and i am making auto components and i supply auto components to oems like maruti and some other large companies and i have a invoice that i have billed them for uh, 10 lakh rupee which i am going to get after 45 days or maybe more if the customer delays so what i can do is that that 10 lakh rupee invoice of maruti which i have billed and supplied i can go on this exchange let's say m1 exchange and i can upload that invoice with my msme registration it is mandatory for all central public sector undertakings and any company which more than 500 crore turnover to register themselves as a client or a customer on this stock exchange so maruti will mandatorily be registered as a customer on the treds m1 exchange so once i upload my invoice of 10 lakh rupee as a msme a notification will go to maruti that you need to pay 10 lakhs to anand please confirm maruti will confirm that particular invoice and then that invoice is available for lenders to bid for so effectively i am doing my bill discounting on a online platform which is acknowledged by a corporate or a customer that he needs to pay that invoice to me now this solves a lot of problem one i don't need to go into mandatory discounting documentation loan agreement nothing like that as a msme my payment is confirmed because maruti is confirming that particular invoice i get loan upfront which otherwise i would have got after 45 days 
and two very important benefits for msmes is that it is a non recourse financing so if at all after 45 days maruti will not pay the lender will not come after me the lender will go to maruti because maruti has acknowledged my invoice so i am done i get my money and the second major advantage for msme is that the interest rate that the lenders will give is much lower because it's a maruti security backed that i am being funded upon and not my own msme percentage so i may even get financing at 9% 10% if it's a invoice that is acknowledged by maruti which otherwise i wouldn't have got had i with my msme credentials gone for discounting an invoice so benefits for msmes similarly for corporates and even for lenders because they have the priority sector limit and they need to go and find msmes to give that 20% priority sector limit they can go online they can select invoices they can bid for their percentage and ultimately reduce operational cost for them as well because there is no documentation no stamp duty in that entire thing so this is one very interesting portal that has recently come up and last year about 11000 crores were distributed as a part of this trds platform and you know friends some of these initiatives come into uh, come into no come into the larger scheme of things only they have been implemented and some time has gone back but if you are aware of these initiatives we can help our clients and maybe even ourselves to make sure that we take advantage of this platform there is a initiative now where they are linking this trds platform with the government e procurement market so if it is a government invoice that you have by default you will get loan from the trds platform so that whole uh, you know government clogging up the system in terms of payment etc might be a thing of the past if trds and gem come together so this is one very important initiative that we need to be aware about uh, apart from the ones that we spoke about now new benefits through the atmanirbhar bharat package uh, we saw the finance minister and uh, uh, you know coming out in four or five uh, different uh, capsules and uh, laying out the schemes uh, and msmes have been a large beneficiary under the atmanirbhar bharat package again because of jobs and the potential that the msmes have for creating jobs with small 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 capital that can be given to them so the flagship scheme under the atmanirbhar bharat package was the emergency credit line to msmes for 3 lakh crores what this scheme says is that if i am a existing borrower and if i have loan outstanding as of 29th of february 2020 i am eligible for a 20% top up loan and this top up loan is something that i can avail and use in this corona time or even afterwards and i don't have to pay principal for the next 12 months after that it's a four year facility so remaining three years i will pay that loan in 36 equal installments now friends this scheme is not only for msmes even if you are a not registered msme even if you are a trader you are eligible for this scheme if your borrowings are less than 25 crore and if your turnover is less than 100 crores there is also cap on interest so interest that can be charged by banks under this 20% top up loan is restricted to 9.25% and for nbfcs is restricted to a 14% there is no additional collateral that you need to give and there is no additional guarantee that you have to give there is no requirement of any guarantee fee as well which is there under the earlier scheme but under emergency credit line scheme there is no need for any guarantee fee as well as we speak today about 25000 crore odd have already been distributed as a part of this scheme and they expect that by 31st of october this entire money will be distributed like the moratorium that was given by rbi for 6 months this provision is also a opt in so eligible borrowers we don't have to run behind banks they will get a communication from the banks that you have a outstanding loan of 1 crore as of 29 february 20 lakhs is your eligibility and if you don't want that tell me otherwise it is deemed you know sanction limit given to you you can withdraw as and when you require so this is one initiative that people have started receiving emails if not then you know the banks would soon send you 
it's also possible that uh, if you have more than one bank you can get noc from the other banks and you can just work with uh, one lender for taking this uh, top up uh, facility but this is one scheme that is expected to reach the msmes and help them in this uh, ease out process this emergency credit line is for uh, sma 0 and sma 1 which are the good performing accounts if it is a npa or a stressed asset then there is a separate scheme which is of uh, 20000 crores as has been announced this scheme is also available and has been activated in detail where the bank will give loan to the promoter of 15% or maximum up to 75 lakhs and that 75 lakhs will be infused as equity into the company or the msme now this is not a direct loan into the company but through promoter financing it comes as equity which is something that is much desired in a npa situation over here nbfcs are not there it is only through scheduled banks the about to our debt but i think what is also needed in today's situation is equity and the equity infusion of fund of funds is something that is at about 50000 crores now cdb or small industries development bank of india is the designated body for rolling out this equity infusion and cdb will not do it directly cdb will invest in various different funds this 50000 crores and these private equity funds venture capital funds aifs will go and further lend to different different businesses and msmes so cdb has started this online application on its website where you can go and upload your profile and cdb will make sure that through one of its funds the eligibility is tested and if at all there is a funding probability you will get that now this 50000 crores equity can be a big change because once you have 50000 crore of equity a 2 is to 1 debt equity ratio would mean that you can actually have a corpus of about 1 lakh 50000 crores for msmes which can be a big differentiator in a capital starved situation like we have here one more initiative came for msmes or for smaller businesses is that global tenders are disallowed for orders up to 200 crores now what's a global tender sometimes psus or governments send the tenders to the embassies which are based in of various countries which are based in india and those embassies will then forward that tender to their respective home country and attract participation in this tender but this global tender will now no longer be allowed for tenders which are less than 200 crores in value for more than 200 crores in value the global tendering can still be done mind you this doesn't allow or this doesn't restrict foreign participation in the tender it is only a method that we will not reach out to foreign companies if they want to come then of course most welcome as per the tender eligibility norms last benefit i don't think it qualifies for a benefit but the government calls it a benefit where msme receivables from government and the public sector undertakings will be released within 45 days now this this is supposed to be released and uh, you know but yes uh, this is called as a benefit nonetheless and these are the few five new initiatives that we saw under the atmanirbhar bharat package so friends i think uh, we have we have finished uh, uh, one hour and uh, we have we have gone through the broad uh, requirement of uh, msmes the registration what are the existing schemes samban samadhan sampark and also the new schemes through the atmanirbhar bharat package Uh, i'm sure there may be questions that uh, one may need to discuss about and we'll take them in the panel along with the presence of kinjal and ajay bhai uh, bye bye but uh, thank you very much for allowing me a patient listening and it's always a pleasure to come at gorivali uh, cp study center thank you very much thank you anand ji it was a, such a wonderful session now let us start our panel discussion uh, now i request abhay bhai and kinjal to carry forward the panelists Yeah, Otto, Bobby, and Kinjal. Hi. Yeah. The... Kinjal, before before we do the panel, I was thinking oh. that uh, can we do a short poll uh, with Got the it. participants okay. uh, so that uh, you know we try and see as to how many of us as chartered accountants are registered under MSME from the two hundred plus members that we have today. let's take a poll that how many of us are registered under msmes so there are two questions which i have 
and may I just request uh, the, the, the organizers to bring up that poll so that we can all vote on that. Yes, the poll is now live. Lovely. Okay, we have about 150 votes. Hundred and seventy votes. Yeah. So most, uh, I think, uh, seventy-five percent of people have voted, and uh, as we see, about thirty-four percent have registered the firm as MSME. That's a, that's a large number, and uh, about sixty-six percent have not registered uh, for uh, MSME. And, and, and it's very interesting that so many CA firms and CAs have registered themselves uh, as uh, MSMEs. On a lighter side, only if you answer the next poll will you get the CPE hours. So be ready for the next uh, poll as well. Let me share the results. Yes. The second poll is uh, currently, are you getting any inquiries from your clients or potential clients? on MSME benefits, are people calling you up and saying that, am I eligible? What are the benefits available to me? This is since 2006, but now in 2020, people are uh, so much uh, queries are there with clients. Uh, is that an experience of others as well? I think we have, uh, we have clearly a majority of about 80% uh, uh, of us are saying that, uh, you know, our clients are inquiring on MSME benefits and uh, MSME registration process. So yes, Kinjal, clearly this is in line with the expectation because of us get questions and uh, if 80% of us are on the same line, then uh, you know, we, we are on the same side. Good, so I think this gives a perspective into the uh, now panel, Kinjal, and uh, yeah. over to you to take it up. Uh Thanks, uh, Anand. It was a really wonderful session. A lot of insights uh, on the MSME and other schemes that are available to small and medium enterprise. Uh, and they are really the backbone of the economy. So a lot of interest amongst the participants. Uh, I, personally for them as well as uh, the professional opportunities that lie forward as chartered accountants. So. Uh, Anand, I mean, as we start with this panel discussion, I already got some questions from the uh, participants as well. Uh, and as we start this, there are a lot of questions which are coming up on the startup India along with the MSME. So, uh, at, I mean, at the outside, I would request Abhay Bhai. Uh, Abhay Bhai, can you share what is, I mean, what is startup India? How does it broadly differs from MSME scheme? And what is the registration process briefly? And uh, uh, what are the benefits which are associated with startup India? Uh, Kinjal, uh, actually, startup, I will say it is a part of MSME, but it has various other things which has to be, uh, what you can say, complied with. Now, it is a flagship com in initiative of government of India, and uh, its intention is to catalyze startup culture and build a strong and inclusive ecosystem for innovation and entrepreneurship. Uh, there is a requirement of obtaining a registration and which is through Department of uh, Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade, which is running under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. And basically what is uh, rather registration process is may not be relevant, but who can register is more relevant over here. Right. That is one is the age of the entity has to be looked at the company has to be in operation for not more than 10 years from its date of incorporation or date of formation if it is not a in, uh, what you can say a body corporate then the type of entities which are covered are limited private limited companies I, I will say private limited because obviously limited will be a big size company private limited companies or registered partnership firms or llps again here also there is a uh, criteria for turnover which should not exceed 100 crores for any startup since its incorporation. So if in a particular year it had gone above 100 crore and again it has come down below 100 crore and then it will not be eligible for registering itself as a startup. 
again it has to be an original entity that is it's not not formed through splitting up or reconstructing of the existing business mm -hmm. and another thing is basically the basic requirement after all these conclusions or all these inclusions will be about the innovation and scalability because what what startup is for is that there should be some innovation of a product or a process or improvement of a product or process or service and which is scalable has to be proved by the entity then only it will be eligible for being considered for the startup uh, now coming to the benefits as such uh, there are various concessions which are available to startups starting with say around the six labor laws are to be self certified for the compliances there is no what you can say verification or supervision or inspection In, similarly there are three environmental laws that all, also to be just self certified coming to the labor laws again there is no inspection which will be conducted for the five years since its registration there are various ipr benefits that is the registration of the intellectual property rights there are various benefits to that for the for the procurement norms when you are public procurement is happening then there means you are bidding for a public procurement program as a startup then there are relaxations on the prior turnover prior experience or even the emds are forgone for this type of entities another thing is that they have launched a fund of funds for startups also and which is around a 10000 crore corpus which is managed by sibb and the process of the startups is that the government will allot the funds to sibb sibb in turn will be allocating funds to some venture funds which are the venture uh, financiers and they will evaluate the startup and then onward lend or onward take the equity into the startups company companies act has also given a benefit of the easy exit scheme for the startups coming to our bread and butter area of income tax again there is an adic benefit which is there for three consecutive years out of the seven years of the startup they can take the benefit of 100% exemption of profits earned during that period but here again there is a requirement of a imb certificate which is inter interministerial board certificate which has to be obtained to claim this exemption and last but not the least is that startups can issue uh, equity at a substantially high premium and as you know that whenever you are issuing equity which is not equivalent to the book value of the company as per rule 11 ua you are your that premium element becomes taxable in the hands of the financial uh, in the hands of the recipient company but here they have been exempted from this uh, excess share value receipt, receipt i think these are the things which i think angel we i should have addressed correct yeah correct okay uh, great anand would you like to add anything to this i think the one important uh, distinction is that uh, the the sector wise limitation that startup india has so it needs to be a uh, within a space that is scalable where wealth uh, can be created in fact it's mentioned in the definition that it should be scalable or wealth generation opportunities are available but under msme that's not the case and it's and it's applicable to a large uh, size and a large uh, bouquet of uh, industries that it can serve so hypothetically a cfa uh, might not be so scalable or so much wealth generating for sure but certainly uh, we can get registered as msme and not as startup india okay also it, uh, the msme can be any entity sole proprietorship uh, partnership llps private limited companies for startup india sole proprietorship and those a businesses are not allowed to get registered okay so you mean they they have to be private limited companies only or llps private limited or partnership firms uh, i think there are a lot of uh, participants who are restless to know why traders are not allowed under the msme scheme they feel that uh, some injustice is being done to them if the traders are not permitted to be part of msme so uh, anand will you throw some light on what is the logic and the background why they have been excluded yeah i think the background uh, one will need to 
go through the substance of the MSME DA Act in 2006, where the whole hypothesis was that how does one enhance our GDP or the contribution of MSMEs to our GDP. Now, unfortunately, traders don't add up to the GDP. As, as far as the manufacturing is concerned, only the final output is considered or your services also adds up to your GDP. But traders in that trading, they are not contributing or adding to the GDP. And hence they felt that let's focus on people who are contributing to GDP rather than people who are facilitating that growth in GDP. But what is now happening Kinjal, is that because some of these uh, schemes, for example, the emergency credit line scheme, they have, they have removed this uh, uh, restriction that was there on traders and it is also available to traders. Similarly, the RBI interest subvention scheme is also available to traders. So depending on a peculiar scheme or a requirement of a particular scheme, they have enabled traders, but by definition, registration as traders is something that is not allowed as per the act. Okay, okay, correct. I think that makes sense because the government has to focus on the GDP and the value addition that happens to a particular entity or by promoting that entity. Uh, so I think that's justified. Yeah. Uh, uh, another question which is coming up is in case of concessional loans to MSME, what are the documents that are required to be submitted and especially for entities that do not have adequate past track records? Uh, what is that they provide as justification? So if you are talking about this emergency credit line under Atma Nirbhar Bharat package of 3 lakh crore, it is available only to existing borrowers. So only if you have an existing borrowing as of 29 February, only then you are eligible for that 20% top up loan. In fact, if you have a sanction limit, but you have not drawn down, then also you will not be eligible. So you should have actually drawn down that loan for you to get that 20% uh, top up. But in a good situation that you are talking about where you have not taken loan, this emergency credit line scheme is not available for you, but you can go under the other MSME schemes which are available like Stand Up India, where one crore is still available without collateral and without guarantee. In fact, if you don't have loan, then it should be much easier for you to you know, get new loan rather than going under these schemes, which are basically for uh, you know, slightly more stressed borrowers. Okay, right. Uh Above another question, uh, what type of entities like partnership firm, LLPs or private companies is more advisable in terms of the benefits that are available under both MSME? I mean, Startup India, though you have already covered that you need to have an LLP or a private limited company, but especially for MSME. Uh, Ababa, you are on mute. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Ideally speaking, if you look at the current situation of the tax laws and the way the concessions are given to corporate entities, mm -hmm. that is the private limited companies, mm -hmm. because uh, all these MSMEs will be operating under the what you can say less turnover regime. Mm -hmm. So, um, my personal opinion is that because of the tax other benefits are already there once you are registered as msme you are getting all the benefits of msme d act but additional benefits which you may again try to extract out of this scenario is like 115 bwa where 22 percent tax rate has come now and there is no tax on net profit another thing is if you are setting up a new unit after first october 19 then 115 b ab is there where still further reduction of 15 percent tax rate is there and no mat tax. So yeah. these are the advantages which one should take. And again, for exit also, there is a easy option to exit for a corporate entity for MSME. Mm. So considering this scenario, I would advise, because otherwise what happens that LLP will be taxed at a maximum marginal rate from one rupee. Okay. So basically corporate entity will be the ideal scenario for even the MSMEs. Okay. Uh, and another question for you, if there is an MSME which is already enjoying some benefit, I mean, uh, the advanced facilities from a bank, and that is against some collateral like properties, 
and now there is under this msme scheme you have this advantage of having a collateral free loan can that existing facility be converted to an exist i mean collateral free loan and you uh, are able to i mean will you be able to withdraw that collateral security so kitchen this 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 is this emergency line is uh, you know because we are all cs we will understand this uh, much better that it's a very smart way to plan our limited resources mm-hmm. what the government has done is that while 3 lakh crore is a boiler plate number mm-hmm. actually the government has set up a trust which will guarantee to the banks any default mm-hmm. and trust they will capitalize over a period of 3 years totaling to about 50000 crores so effectively we will have a hit in our budget or our deficit which is maybe you know one sixth of the total number and also in 3 years what they also said is that this collateral free loan guarantee free loan will continue to enjoy the existing security that has been offered for the loan so you already have a loan as of february end you would have some security for that loan now typically indian psu banks would keep a margin in terms of the security value and the loan value so the collateral free loan guarantee free loan will also get benefit of that enhanced margin that is available in the existing security so no additional security but existing security will be available for this loan as well okay uh another question i is for i think both of you Uh, what do you look as the practice opportunity in the msme sector uh, especially the schemes that have been floated by the government and how chartered accountants can help their clients uh, 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 be a facilitator in all this and generate professional opportunities uh, anand can you first share please yeah i think you know one is of course the whole uh, registration part in terms of uh, making sure whether a client is uh, eligible and uh, communicating to him the various benefits of uh, the msme space but to my mind it's it's essentially a compliance based thing which uh, uh, you know we we as chartered accountants can contribute much more and just not on get him registered but you know an understanding of the schemes is something that uh, will help add real value to your client the second could be the samadhan portal now the samadhan portal is an arbitration and it's by and large online and you as a chartered accountant can also then go if at all there is a physical requirement available to putting across your case in front of that particular facilitation authority so the samadhan initiative is the second thing where you can uh, you know help clients recover their loan and ultimately if business is uh, you know prosper we as enabling them also uh, you know have 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 our benefit and the third is maybe raising resources if at all you know you are aware and and with your relationship with bankers etc if you can communicate to your client that these are the various different schemes available maybe mm-hmm. help connect with the respective bankers and make sure that this interest subvention scheme the 1 crore without collateral scheme the atmanirbhar bharat scheme and all of that they can take benefit of so ultimately it's like when you have a small tree you need to protect that small tree and protect him so that one day it grows big and it helps you these mm-hmm. business are small and the ca can you know have the role of protecting them so that they could uh, viable businesses okay uh, abhay bhai yeah i will echo what anand has told and okay. one or two more things which can be considered is to make them ready for the market i will say that there is a fund of funds which has been created hmm. so how to make the startup not startup but msme ready to hmm. be able to take the benefit of that fund of funds because okay. there what will happen is that you have to make them aware that because your business is promising though because of the current scenario it may not be uh, that attractive but mm. how to make it more attractive and make it uh, uh, ready to be showcased as a eligible candidate to get the funds from the fund of funds which is floated and okay. it is an equity participation mm. which will help visibility for the company also so okay. there i think maybe a mid size of msme is which the many of our many of us are already catering to medium size of msmes and they are mm-hmm. promising uh, ventures actually mm-hmm. so if we make them ready with this and uh, create systems and controls and everything within the organization mm-hmm. to take the benefits and we will be of great help to them okay uh 
I think in last three to five minutes, we have got a lot of questions. It's now more than 39 questions that have come up. So uh, let me take up those questions as well. Uh, one question is Udyog Aadhaar portal is still not updated for the revised limits of investment. What is the way out? So this revised uh, investment limit uh, will be applicable from uh, 1st July 2020. So effectively okay. starting next month, you will see the revised limits available. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, by the way, what would happen in case uh, there are business uh, where they have bus multiple business lines? Uh, is Udyogada required for each business line or you can have Quadi entity? Uh, actually, Udyogada card is for business entity. What is required is that one of the promoter has to uh, give a other number and it can be generated. So if I will take an example that if an entity has five business lines, but mm -hmm. which are verticals within the entity itself, mm -hmm. then only one Udyog Aadhaar card will be allotted to that entity. Okay. But suppose that group itself mm -hmm. is operating through five business lines with five different entities. Okay. And the owner is one only. Mm -hmm. The promoter is one. Then mm -hmm. what is possible is that he may apply with mm -hmm. his own Aadhaar card for all the five entities. Okay. And take five with your brothers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another question. I mean, it has two flavors to it. Uh, one is that we all know that under the Samadhan scheme, uh, any MSME which has its outstanding outstanding for more than forty five days can file an arbitration kind of a process for recovery. Uh, the two different questions that are coming up here is, what would happen if the counterparty is also an MSME? So can you still go to the Samadhan portal and uh, ask for recovery of your claims? Uh, the second question is, what would happen in case the counterparty is not an MSME or is not a corporate entity, which is under the companies that require to give disclosure. So it's like a partnership firm or a proprietary concern and not paying your dues. So what is the recourse available to an MSME under the Samadhan scheme for these two kinds of entities? Uh, Abhay Bhai, will you share? Your yeah. uh, I have gone through the MSME uh, D Act and mm -hmm. this uh, Samadhan, Samadhan related provisions or, mm -hmm. or, or 45 days and defaults provision. Mm -hmm. But nowhere it is mentioned that mm -hmm. the MSME should have an outstanding only from big corporates or non MSME entity. Okay. So personally, I feel that even an MSME to MSME outstanding Mm -hmm. can be routed through Samadhan portal okay. because I have not come across that aspect. Maybe Anand, if he has come across, then he can throw light on that. And another thing which you were talking about related to uh, was the regarding uh, MSME being? MSME having its claim from entities which are like sole proprietors of partnership. Ah, so again, the same thing. Even, even though it is not an MSME, uh, it, it has an uh, outstanding which is non-MSME but non-corporate. Hmm. Still, he can go. Th uh, that entity can go through the Samadhan portal okay. for uh, settlement. Because what happens is that Samadhan portal immediately sends a mail to hmm. the other party to confirm whether that outstanding is there or not. Okay. okay. Yeah. So there is a confirmation process available on Samadhan portal. Yes. Okay. So I think I completely agree with uh, Abhay Bhai Kinjal that we need okay. to see from the perspective of the petitioner. If mm -hmm. the petitioner is MSME registered, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter if the counterparty is a MSME, sole proprietorship or any other uh, you know, business type. What okay. we keep there in mind as far as Samadhan is concerned is that this is available only to micro and small. Small, not medium. It's not available to medium. Okay. Correct. Other businesses who are there they need to continue to use the formal litigation and the arbitration channels that are available. This mm -hmm. summer initiative is available only for the micro and uh, uh, the small. Okay. Okay. Uh, one question that is another coming up is that banks are not willing to give collateral free loans to MSME. What is the recourse available to MSME? Uh, uh, Anand? So, so this emergency credit line is a, is a fairly... Uh, you know, comprehensively drafted scheme that is in favor of the borrowers because people understand the situation that we are in and MSMEs would need financing. 
so it's a opt in kind of a provision wherein banks will have to give you that particular 20% okay there, there is a little bit of uh, drafting there where banks need to be comfortable with the credit position and the profile of the buyer but by and large what we are seeing is that this being a enabling provision in current situation uh, you know unless you are grossly in violation of not submitting stock statements for one year or you know you have a default history or something like that banks would generally kind of uh, you know lend this support to you because ultimately if this 20% is not made available even their it can be at risk in today's time okay right okay uh, uh by my another question is uh, if there are dues from msme which are outstanding uh, for a company who has the dues payable to msme uh, are they required to provide the interest as well or is it sufficient if they give a disclosure by way of a notes to accounts uh, as per msme d act uh-huh. interest triggers immediately on default actually okay so uh, technically speaking each entity where it defaults to msmes it has to provide for interest mm. but it's not the case so with any of major major entities major corporates are not providing that and they are just going through giving that disclosure through notes the mm. provision is not made in the accounts as such mm. but if this case comes through samadhan then they will have to Uh, pay that amount but practically what happens is that msmes who are dealing with big corporates mm-hmm. they have to balance of trade off is to be seen between the business and the recovery mm-hmm. so if they go after recovery and if they are not given the business in future mm-hmm. what is more important for them accordingly the trade off will be done by each msme vendor okay just just one thought kejal bhai here that uh, yeah. this this is typically a problem with msmes that how much ever benefit you kind of give them let's say samadhan portal or uh-huh. companies to disclose ultimately if i go and file a case this uh-huh. is my last transaction with that customer or the client correct <laughs> 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 to solve this problem one of the things that is now being thought about is that there is a gst portal where invoices are being uploaded by various customers and clients uh-huh. on the gst portal itself the government software will pick up that if it is an invoice that is due from a msme which is unpaid for 45 days then by default the proceedings will start and you will start getting notices because okay. initiating myself is very difficult in today's situation with the bargaining power that the msme won't have but if it's it with the gst portal now enables beyond uh-huh. 10 lakhs is what they are considering there will uh-huh. be automatic uh, you know emails that will go off invoice level from the gst portal Okay, okay. So there is another question that is on the samadhan. I mean, what is the uh, where is the portal? I mean, what is the address of the portal where one somebody could go and lodge a complaint against the recovery for recovery? Yeah. So uh, the only one website is champions. gov. in. On champions. gov. in, you have a link to samadhan as well. If at all you want to directly go, I think it is samadhan. gov. in. But remember, just one website, champions. gov. in, and all links are through that. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ababai, there is another question which is on the trades, uh, the discounting portal. Can an export bill be discounted? I mean, registered on this portal, or it is only the local sales that could be discounted? I will, I will say it cannot be because basically you have to understand the trades portal has to register both the parties, mm. the customers to whom they have sold. They have also to get themselves registered on this portal. Okay. okay now that portal itself has various kyc norms plus mm-hmm. the rbi lending norms are there because okay. here the, there is it is a three way uh, uh, what you can say interaction the vendor mm-hmm. is there, customer is there and the uh, bankers are there so bankers will be lending to actually what is happening is that lending is to the vendor msme vendor yeah. but right. indirectly the recourse has to be to the uh to the customer from the customer it has to recover mm-hmm. so it has to be within the framework of the indian laws so if okay. a foreign entity is there and if the amount is discounted of a foreign vendor the ah. recovery will not be there with the bankers okay right <clears throat> uh and another question for you uh in the case of a real estate 
transaction i mean uh, sorry a real estate uh, industry will the investment in land also be considered as investment in machinery or equipments no so this is only plant and uh, machinery for manufacturing right. and equipment for services so land building all of that is not to be considered when you are okay. calculating limits of investment Okay, there is another question is where again, I mean, on the similar line, which I think you have already answered is, what if somebody is a, in a manufacturing industry, but majorly getting things done on an outsourcing basis, where it does not have much of its investment in the plant and machinery. So will they qualify to register under MSME? Anand? Yeah, I think so. Because, uh, you know, as, uh, as long as you are not a pure wholesale or a retail trader, which is excluded mm. from that NIC category. Uh -huh. Even, let's say, you know, getting it done through job work or contract, in a sense, uh, you know, if you are, if you are dealing with that thing and adding value into mm. that process, you should be eligible. And also yeah. the, the registration process of Udyog Aadhaar is the self-certified uh, kind of thing. And a lot of trading entities have unfortunately got also registered under that rightly or wrongly. Uh, uh, correct. With, with that kind of a framework that we are dealing with, I think uh, it's registrable under the Udyog Aadhaar number. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, another question is that while you have registered under one category, but during the year your category changes, how do you intimate and what is your responsibility within the time frame within which you are supposed to get your status modified? Uh, Abhay, Abhay, will you answer this question? Actually, this position has to be taken at the each financial year end. Okay. So, if in the previous year you were already at the end of the previous year, you were covered by this small, my, uh, small entity, mm. then you continue for that year as a small entity. Okay. But when the next year comes into picture, it has to be registered as a, uh, what you can say, uh, ent medium entity. Okay. If it exceeds the limit. Okay. In fact, uh, Kinjal, there is a mandatory requirement to surrender Udyog Aadhaar. If you cross oh. the shows of even medium, then you, okay. have, then you surrender it and uh, let go of the number. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, another question, Abhay Bhai, for you. Uh, what are the other benefits that would be available to an entity uh, which is uh, MSME, I mean, though not eligible to be registered as MSME because it being a trading entity. So, what are the kind of benefits that they could avail in terms of financing? In terms of financing, I think Anand has just uh, given you idea that interest subvention is there, which can be taken benefit of by the entity, trading entity, but that is also under this COVID scheme. Hmm. Under the COVID, otherwise. The MSME registration itself, whatever benefit it is giving, mm -hmm. has to be through the MSME entity only. Traders oh. have only very limited access to the what you can say the benefits other than what what is there through the financing. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no major benefits the trading entity will be able to avail if it is mm -hmm. not an MSME because it is not an MSME. Okay. 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 Anand, would you like to add on this? I think that's correct. Uh, you know, the, this interest subvention scheme uh, on that overdraft, you get uh, that interest subvention that is available. This emergency credit line under Atmanir Bharat, uh, 3 lakh crore, that is available. Mm. Even West Asset NPA scheme of 20,000 crore, uh, that is uh, also available. So, all of these schemes oh. are available. So, and everything is under COVID now the that COVID. you have to take benefit. Okay. So post COVID, I think again they will not be left with any benefit. Okay. Uh, Abhay, can you uh, elaborate uh, on the brief aspect of what is fund of fund and what are the benefits that are available and how does that screen operate actually and there is a concept of uh, mother fund uh, also so what how does that operate actually speaking fund of fund is a concept where the lending is through uh, what is a venture fund mm -hmm. venture fund itself will it is in close contact with the entities who want the funds hmm. but how the venture fund will get the funds 
so hmm. venture fund is again dependent on sidb who has okay. specific credit lines available okay. and in fact sidb has various uh, what you can say fund of funds which are already operating in sidb hmm. i think there are three funds which are already operating under sidb Mm-hmm. One is the fund of fund for startups (FFS) scheme they call. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is an Aspire fund, okay, which again looks after the MSME sector, it not startups, but mm-hmm. including agro sector. Mm-hmm. Focus is agro and rural areas. Okay. And uh, third is again one IAF that is India Aspiration Fund. Mm-hmm. So what happens that the fund of fund concept is for attracting or. Uh, inculcating the equity culture into the msmes okay by that government has allocated funds to sidb sidb mm-hmm. becomes the nodal agency that it becomes the mother fund okay in turn it will float various venture funds mm-hmm. which will be monitored by various what you can say fund managers mm-hmm. and they come in contact with the msme units okay so lending is through the various feeder funds but the mother fund is the sidb entity mm-hmm. who has been funded by the government so there is a four way flow government to sidb okay. sidb to venture funds and venture funds to the msme units okay it is basically initially they fund maybe many a times what happens it is a mezzanine flow, uh, mezzanine funding also where mm-hmm. for a certain period of time it may be a debt component mm-hmm. then it may be converted on the basis of the performance it may be converted into equity also okay so there are various what you can say uh, com- com- uh, permutations and combinations on which the funds will be working but basically okay. it is a contribution towards the equity of the msme to create mm-hmm. that culture and then have a base wherein they can go in for a listing also in future okay okay so anand another question for you is uh, what are the compliances uh, that would follow when somebody gets registered under msme Yeah, the the good part or the bad part is that there is no regular filing requirement uh, for that uh, udyog aadhar in fact okay. you kind of change your threshold of investment or turnover you need to upgrade yourself <clears throat> surrender if at all you cross that threshold so there is mm-hmm. no filing that uh, one should look at from a compliance perspective mm-hmm. i don't know mm-hmm. the ca audience here or not but there is no annual or uh, compliance that comes in okay Uh, uh, uh another question for you abhay bhai is uh, what is the process of registering on the trades portal uh, frankly i am not aware about this trades portal registration anand if you yeah. can so like so, so 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 the trades is a platform on which there are these three stock exchanges so mm-hmm. you can go on this let's say m1 stock exchange or rxil or invoice smart and mm-hmm. register with your udyog aadhar Mm-hmm. and register with your udyog aadhar there is a drop down list where you can see of various companies who are registered as clients or customers you need okay. to see that this is my particular client and mm-hmm. then this will go as a notification so you need to okay. once register your msme you will get a username and password and mm-hmm. then be able to select your client from the drop down menu in fact okay. you can even do it uh, yourself uh, and see the drop down list which is even available open for everyone mm-hmm. are registered under this uh, m1 stock exchange okay okay uh okay so another question is uh, what would happen in case uh, for an msme where the agreed upon terms were the terms of credit were 90 days instead of 45 days so 90 days would prevail or 45 days would prevail in such case obviously 90 days because msme unit itself has contracted with that uh terms correct all right okay and another related question to that is if some entity is registering as an msme entity can he or can it also initiate proceedings for the past recovery uh, for the bills which were raised while it was not an msme abhay uh, bhai yes yes, yes. Uh, yeah. see udyog aadhar once registered uh-huh. it gives you an msme status Okay. and msme status this is just an enabling provision to get a udyog ya udyog aadhar number uh-huh. but you were already an msme okay in that period also okay yeah. so as per me it should be yeah, this yes. particular 
point, uh, Kinjal has been also dwelt with by Delhi High Court in Punjaloid matter in 2016. Uh -huh. SME had taken registration, uh, you know, just previous month. Pending uh -huh. that was one year old, and then yeah. to the Samadhan portal. Uh -huh. and the company said that look, that is not valid because at uh -huh. point in time you didn't have MSME registration. Uh -huh. and the that the fact that registration doesn't mean that you were not a MSME then. If you are mm -hmm. able to identify that when that outstanding was there, you were a MS, irrespective of registration or not, you can take uh -huh. it to the Samadhan portal. Okay. In fact, in fact, uh, we as our firm itself, uh -huh. we have taken registration around two years back. Okay. And we have filed a, on MS one year back rather, I think, one and a half year back. And we uh -huh. have filed for on Samadhan portal our dues which were outstanding around two and a half years back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so it has that been accepted on the portal. MSME could uh, entail by registering even as of now. Yes. Correct. 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 Okay. Uh, another question is, what are the tax benefits available to MSME registered under a proprietary concern business? Proprietary concern. Uh, Anand? As such, Anand? Yeah. No, but I go ahead. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. No. All yours, Abhay Bhai. <laughs> Abhay, please go ahead. Yeah, actually speaking, there are no benefits to MSMEs mm -hmm. as such under Income Tax Act. Okay. Okay, but still, uh, for an as far as proprietorship, there are no benefits. Mm -hmm. But for a uh, corporate entity, as I mentioned earlier, ATIS benefit is there. Mm -hmm. Not only corporate, but if it is a startup and it is an LLP mm -hmm. or a partnership firm, mm -hmm. it can go and take the benefit of ATISC, which is that. Okay consecutive years out of seven years profits uh -huh. it may claim as exemption mm -hmm. and another thing is about for corporate only again I, as i mentioned earlier 56 to 7 b will not be applicable right that is also a benefit which is there okay okay, okay. Uh, right uh, Abhay, there is one clarification which one of our member is seeking uh, uh, as Anand said that you need to uh, go and update your status once at the beginning of every financial year. So that would apply even in case where there is upgradation as well as I mean you move from medium to micro because there are some investments which have been sold out or your plant and machinery has reduced. So uh, that is correct, right? Yeah, it should be. Both ways. Okay. Any registration has to be updated accordingly. Okay, okay right. Uh, Anand, uh, members are wanting to know what is the cost of using the Samadhan portal as well as the trades facility? There's no cost. Samadhan is a facilitating, uh, 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 it's, a, it's a pro MSME facility that is there. So uh -huh. cost in terms of using that uh, facilitation center and okay. uh, from, from a TREDS portal also, there's no cost. Of course, okay. the interest is something that you pay on that uh, loan that you take, but there's uh -huh. no cost that uh, you have to pay on each of these portals. On a lighter mm -hmm. note, on Samadhan portal is the cost of the client which you lose. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, another question, uh, Abhay, that is again on trades. Yeah. Uh, what if my client is not registered on the trades? Can I still get the discounting facility? Uh, no. Actually speaking, you your client, means it is the both uh, three way, it is a three way transaction. Okay. So there has to be a recourse to the client. All right. These are being discounted by the vendor. Okay. So if that party is not registered on the portal, obviously that funding will not be happening. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, and then there is another question whether based on half yearly return filed by a company with MCA with respect to outstanding payments to an MSME. Any Suomoto action is likely to be taken by the Department of MSME or ROC against the company for amounts which are outstanding for more than 45 days? So I think that's the whole point of capturing data that ah. uh, once you have that data, that uh, data is actionable and mm. uh, the kind of uh, flavor that uh, the MSME enjoys and the attention that MSME has in the policy makers, this mm. can certainly be used to make sure that uh, there is not delay in terms of the work capital and interest. So okay. I'm sure that with data available, it can certainly be used to enforce the right provisions of law. Okay. Maybe Samadhan portal will be having better access to the outstandings through this exercise and they can Correct. dispose the cases much faster. Correct. True. 
uh, abhay bhai another question is that somebody has registered under udyog aadhar by mistake because their bankers forced them to do so but now they have realized that udyog aadhar is not for them so how do they cancel that udyog aadhar registration i think that registration process cancellation process is also there available on the website okay uh, the process i am not able to explain over here okay okay but cancellation is possible is possible okay all right uh i think we have covered almost all the questions which have been raised uh conveners and coordinators if there are any questions which maybe i have missed out you can just post it to me which i can take up with the uh, speakers and the panelists i think most of the questions has been answered but still if any question is unanswered let them uh, email to our bcsc events at the gmail.com and we will give the replies to the participants now, now before i propose uh, before i tell ash to propose a belt is a vote of thanks there are two announcements the first one is regarding the uh, bcsc uh, fees payment uh, since today is the last date i request all the members to inform their friends who has not paid the fees for this current financial year to pay by today and secondly regarding the forthcoming meeting we have on 24th of june for the meeting on a uh, recent development of code of ethics by shashikant barve ji it will be on wednesday 6 to 8 pm then the second meeting is on 27th of june it's from 5, 5 to 7 saturday the topic will be on sa 230 and sa 240 members you will be aware that these two seminars has to be compulsorily be attended by all the members because they have to complete their four hour cp by this uh, 30th of june so as soon as the registration links comes you uh, reg uh, you kindly register it i i want to make one observation which is uh, i am very happy that we three office we three managing committee members of bcas member charter and society are together today on one seminar and thanks bcsc for giving us this opportunity <laughs> yeah thanks thanks bcsc no request ashish ashish for a moment let me i mean uh, anand and abhay bhai it was really a wonderful session and now as proposed by vijay uh, yashish would carry out the well deserved vote of thanks thank you sir thank you very much yes yes thanks vijay for giving me this opportunity to hardly propose the uh, vote of thanks to all the three speakers speaker moderator and the so panelist uh, anand bhai you have covered this uh, seminar uh, in a very uh, lucid manner the you have devoted your time and presentation was uh, superb and was uh, up to the mark and all the points were almost covered for msme and uh, we we i hope that uh, in our practice all our members will uh, be very helpful with these points and also kinjal and abhay bhai for answering all the questions raised by the members we are uh, very thankful for the same and i propose a very hearty vote of thanks to and to raise your hands thank you thank, thank you. you yeah thank you thank new you. way of thank you <laughs> let us meet on 27th uh, 24th yes, of yes. june at 6 pm till then it's bye from vijay and bcsc team thank you